Hello, I'm George Hayes and this tutorial is going to be on SDL 2.0 and loading an image and displaying it. And we're going to use the same project we ended off with in the last video as far as regarding getting SDL 2.0 set up and working with the code blocks mean GW compiler. The, and if we use that same project, you can start off with the files. Include is no real changes going on there. You can go over to game.h and we'll add in, we're going to display two textures. And so we're going to add in two pointers, one for track and one for card. I'm going to show you right now what we're actually going to produce as far as on this. And well, let me make sure I got something else set first. Yeah, take this out. And rebuild. And I'm going to run it. All right. So we've created this window and loaded the basic track texture up, and then as far as this car image right here, and we're going to display them like that. It's pretty simple. All right. So what goes on is we're going to create the pointers as far as to SDL texture to start with for track and one for car. Or you know, if you have your own texture you want to display, you can do that as well. Uh, then we're going to create a rectangle as far as for those same two textures, uh, rectangle track, rectangle car. Now go back as far as everything else in this thing is the same. We're using the same functions and so on. We're going to make some changes as far as on to game.cpp as far as on that. And here we're going to add a null and for the car pointer and the track pointer. All right, just on the initialization. Then. As far as on the init uh, C, initialization CPP or on init CPP, we've made changes to where I believe the window is resizable, and that's been added in. So this little part here. Now, as far as going to, maybe not. I have to go back and look. But the real changes start here as far as on load content dot CPP. We have uh, two integers, one for width and height. Then we're going to load the track texture uh, using image load texture render which is pointed the pointer to the renderer and then the path to track in this case I've put the track image directly in the directory of the project so that's where it's going to look for it and just makes it pretty simple all right and it's going to load it into the pointer track now SEL query texture you're going to point back to that same pointer and we're going to grab the width and the height from it here all right and we can learn more about the rest of this here later on but for now this is what we're using it for to grab the width and the height the rectangle track we're going to set x to 0 and rectangle y is going to, for track is going to be set to 0 that means that it's going to display the image of the track starting the left hand top corner of the window all right and its width is going to be the width of whatever the track is and its height is going to be the height of the track now we're going to create a car texture as far as loading it the same way but with the car name as far as in here you know car image then the same thing as far as the width and so forth as far as the query we're going to use put 350 and 600 to move the car down to about this position as far as on the thing as you've seen as far as when we displayed it here it brings it down to here okay and we have right now the width divided by 2 and height divided by 2 as far as on the rectangle of that because well technically we're displaying the car in half the size that it usually is displayed in I believe here take it out and show you alright and as you can see the car is much larger now than it was before so we'll put that divide by 2 back in here and we'll go on to on event handles nothing changed as far as in there on loop we still haven't added anything in there to handle the movement later on we probably do that as far as when making the car move and so on alright now SDL pointer here as far as in the rendering error we have pointer to the center of the car 
that we're going to create an X and a Y zero as far as on that SDL render clear all right uh, which is going to clear the screen before or we add anything to it SDL render a copy of the track pointer all right and the rectangle to the track so this is you got to put the renderers pointer in the tracks pointer in then null and the track again all right now we're going to do something a little bit different with the car because technically the car I have I want to be able to turn and I have right now the car set to 90 degrees facing upwards so that the top of the screen is going to be my zero later on as far as in it rather than to the left if I put zero in here now and run it the car sits over to the left and I could change that granted by actually changing the texture itself but right now I've just done it this way and so we use, to rotate the car around we can sit there and set the angle as far as in here we have the rectangle to the car here and then the center position the car's pointer and the pointer to that render sitting here and this SDL flip saying none well that could actually be for horizontal and vertical if you want to flip the image you know horizontally or vertically all right now as you've seen right now the car points as far as you know one particular direction all right and this was what we would get if we would actually use the regular render copy as far as in there and it should show you both cars uh, with one pointing one way and one pointing the other as you see here's the regular render copy and here's the render copy EX alright alright so then the only other changes we do to handle that is we destroy the texture before we exit out of the program for both those who did one for the track and one for the car then we go to the render window and out like normal and that's as simple as it is for actually displaying the image and clearing it out of this thing. I hope you liked the video and thank you very much for watching.